Okay, this is going to be part two of part one. So the first thing you have to do is determine how many warp threads you're going to use. If you look at this pattern, it's it looks like there's two different sizes of warp threads, but in reality, they're the same except the colors change. So if you look at the pattern, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen beads you're going to use. So thirteen beads means you're going to need fourteen threads. Because if you count them, the threads here are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to need 14 threads. Now I'm going to put my needle back on my magnet so it doesn't fly all over. So how I start this is I'm going to go, first I'm going to create a overhand knot. So my thread goes over my hand and that's why I pull the overhand knot. Make a loop. Go in there just like if I was going to do um, crocheting. So I'm going to set that there on the hook. Where is my hook? <laughs> okay, first hook. Ooh. Okay. Tie that down because I'm only going to make a small bracelet. And then I'm going to make another knot. That's going to secure that. Now, you want to take this thread and go right like this. See how it went over? Now, this is just for a bracelet. This isn't a, um, a, a necklace. So once I have this, I have a front, front hook. Let's see if I can turn this around to a little bit because I don't want to lose the, where I'm at. So this has a front loop. The front is another hook. The both sides have hooks. So I want to move it over there and then I'm going to go right over that hook like that. Then I'm going to go over and repeat this over and over again. First I want to see if I have it on the right hook. I mean on the right one. The right one um, looks like it belongs right about there. And I've got this on this front hook. I'm going to go back. I'm going to skip a slot or spring slot. And then I'm going to go and wrap it on the back, like so. And then from here, I'm going to skip that slot. And I'm going to the next one because these are a little bit larger beads. Then I'm going to skip that one and I'm going to go around the hook again, skip that slot, and move it to the next one. I'm skipping every other slot. If I have smaller beads, then I'm going to use every single um, spring slot. And you notice I'm just going around and I'm going to count 14 threads. But first I'll start with this. And what I love about this loom already, now I'm going to the next hook, which is this one. Going to that one. Is I get even tension. I'm not struggling with my tension versus all these other looms I purchased. I bought the jewel loom and it broke the first day. The very first day it cracked right in half. I did one project and then I went to do the other project and it just doesn't hold the tension and it just snapped. 
Luckily, I only paid ten dollars for it, and Amazon gave me a refund immediately. And I utilized that to purchase the ricks so and the yeah, just a small little ten dollars. I then I bought the rick loom. The rick loom is awesome if you're making little small projects like maybe earrings and and little bracelets and things of that nature. Then I believe I graduated to much bigger projects. <laughs> I want to make bigger projects. And I was going to buy this one, and then my mind changed my mind. I said, oh, I'm just going to get the Rick's one. And then I realized, you know what? It's not big enough for the pictogram that I want to do. So I'm going to start counting the threads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, and we need one more, and this is number 14, okay, now, oops, let's, let me just skip the slots, here we go, 14, I'm going to turn it around to face me, this is work on my back, the back, do with this. I'm going to wrap that around. Okay. I'm going to temporarily wrap this around this butterfly nut. Just temporarily. And I forgot my crochet hook. Let's go get it. And you're probably wondering why am I going to use a crochet hook? Oh, here's the reason why. I'm going to start taking out the slack. Look at that. That's a lot of slack. So all I'm doing is picking up every thread from one side to the next. And look at that. You get more and more slack. Whoa. Oh, look at that. You don't realize that at first. You think, oh, I, I got it just right. But if you want really good tension, and then I'm going to set that one back into the second slot. And let's fix this one. Let's, let's see, what did I do here? Fix them up when you can because once you put that knot in there. Okay, so I got them all. Hold on to your your tension thread and then slowly place that back and then fix up wherever you may have skipped too many. And look at all that tension. That is a lot of tension. So now I'm holding on to that, releasing the one I Temporarily be held there, holding on to it really good, and then I've got it. Now I'm going to wrap it around the hook again. And I want that nice and tight. Then I'm going to trim this thread. I'm going around those back. loops and just putting a nice little overhand knot in the back and now my loom is ready for um, let me get a clipboard you can't see that I thought that was let me get um, paper Now my loom is ready for weaving. So I'm looking here to make sure that all my threads are in every other slot. Okay, 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 okay. Ah, I noticed something. This one is over too many. So I'm going to take this one and use my crochet hook. This one is good. This one needs to go over. This one needs to go over. 
and then I just pop it over. I skipped a whole lot of them. Well, actually, just skip the one. Oh, that one I skipped. I got too close to that one. Oh, I did it again. Okay, and then I'm going to go over here. Now they're all even. Your eye will catch that right away. Your eyes are going to catch the mistakes right away. Look at that. Maybe it was better the way I had it first time. Casting too many shadows. Oh, right there is good. Okay, so it's ready to start creating a pattern. And see the hooks, how they help you. And wow, I could play a little tune now. So that's how you how you thread your the project, the the end it the NDB in 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 V. <laughs> but it's spelled I N D I V S H O W large wooden bead loom that you can get on Amazon. And it is for wonderful projects, creating purses. I've wanted to make all this started because I made some beautiful dresses, nice evening dresses. And all this started because I wanted to add beads to my to my dresses. And I made a small sample, you know, I got a piece of material of the dress, um, and just a small little piece, and I was trying to create the beads on it. And it came out really terrible. And I'm like, how do you do this? How do you add beads to material? So I went on YouTube, and that's how I got the idea, well not the idea, other people's ideas on how to create beautiful. I just typed in a couture beading, and that took me, it was showing me all these different videos, and I seen the, the jewel room, which I had before. I, I purchased the jewel room when they first came out, and I couldn't remember why I was, I didn't use it. I was like years later, I think it was in 2010 or 11 when I bought it. I seen it on Jewel School. It used to be a program that used to be on our PBS channel. And I said, oh, I want to buy that. So I bought it. And I remember, why did I give it away? What stopped me from not doing that? What frustrated me so much? And I remember when I broke it, when I bought it again, and it was more expensive in 2010, but it came with a lot of stuff. So I bought it and it snapped. And then I remembered way back 2010 or 11, oh, that's why I lost interest in beating. I just said, ah, I just tossed it away. So when I re- got interested because I wanted to make a Roaring Twenties purse and add beads to my beautiful evening dresses. I seen the ju jewel room again. And they make it look so easy. I don't know how come they don't they'll break. I don't know why people don't complain. I know it breaks. But um, then I seen the Rick's loom. I said, well, let me get that Rick's loom. It was 60 something dollars. But it came with a few things extra. In it, which I didn't mind. I didn't mind getting all the extras because I added everything up. And if I would have bought everything separate, it would have been a hundred and some dollars. So I've been playing with the, with the Rick's loom and having a wonderful time with it. But I'm still wanting to make these huge. The Rick's loom only has three inches width. You can make it 12 inches long. I believe it's 12 inches long. I'm not too sure. Let me double check. Let me get my my tape measure. You can only go, where is that measuring? Nine. You can only work 12. Yeah, you can only go 12 inches long. For And it's three inches wide from just the circumference of 
your stoppers. They have two little stoppers. So you have to look at this insert here and that's how wide your um, project is going to be. So it's three inches in width, but if you do the insert, it's only two and three fourths. And even then, it's not going to be really good. Another thing about the rip slope is when you're adding beads at the end, you really got to struggle to add the last row at the end. I struggle, struggle, struggle for that. So he needs to reinvent this and make this larger. The warping rod is too weak. It bends even if you put the slightest tension on it and that changes your be your bracelet or whatever you're making as well. Again, you cannot make, you can probably make a little tiny coin purse with a little tiny necklace. Um, it's a good beginner. It's a good beginner loan. Um, but this one is for more advanced. Um, I say more advanced. I'm pretty sure I'm, 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 a lot of you will agree with me. This is for a more advanced sort of project because you're going to create pictograms. I can create a big, uh, a Roaring Twenties uh, a beaded bag. I can create a beautiful long necklace, uh, even as, as wide as I want a necklace. You can have maybe four different bracelets. There's a bracelet, here it is right here. Here's the seven, well, as long as I want it. Here is a bracelet that is one in, uh, Take a look again. Okay, one and a half. So I have it over here, but if I had it here, let's see, you could make one, two, three, four, five. You could have six bracelets all at once here. You could have six different needles. You can have one here and then stop and make a row. And but again, you have to be very, very organized. Now, I'm going to let you know the truth because you can have, you can have all these um, threads tangled, but that's totally up to you. Now, if you wanted to make a necklace, you could have one here, another one here, and have two needles. Again, you have to be very careful. Now, say for instance, I had four or five yards of thread and I used the bottom and I wanted to turn it around and I have all this excess thread. You unhook it here, you release your your wing nuts, and then if I wanted it to make it tighter, you would turn it like this. Look at that, I'm making it tighter right now. I'm making my tension tighter. But if I had a longer project, I would just twirl it around in there. So I'm going to release this side and tighten it up. I've got some really good tension. I mean super tight. So we're at 18 minutes. I'm gonna go to part three.